Personally, I find it lesbophobic that I am on my period when it is Lesbian Visibility Day and Scorpio full moon with the pink moon tonight. It's really giving homophobia. Hi, welcome to A Sunny Book Nook. Happy Lesbian Visibility Day. Today I have for you a list of my favorite sapphic books of all time. And not all of them feature lesbian main characters, but most of them do. And all of them feature important sapphic elements. Most of these authors are also sapphic with the exception of like one, but I'm very excited to get into this list today, but it's pretty long, so I'm just gonna get started. I'm gonna try to get through these books pretty quickly, but if I do have another video where I talk about the book more extensively, it'll be in the cards. Let's switch it up and start off with the graphic novels today. Okay, okay. So the first graphic novel I have here is On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. This is a thick ass um, graphic novel. I'm pretty sure Tilly Walden is a lesbian. This book is set in space. It features a lot of queer space shenanigans. And there's a main character who's non-binary. There are these lesbian ship masters and there's a space academy involved. It's very angsty. It's kind of sad. And there is just, it's so beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. And I must recommend. The next graphic novel I have here is The 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg. This book is just so beautiful in its art style, in its storytelling. It is kind of following the structure of the 1000 arabian what's what's the one uh fairy tale about the woman who uh doesn't get killed by her evil prince husband who kills all of his wives because she promises to tell him a story and then doesn't finish it yeah it's basically like a play on that but even more expansive and featuring a lesbian relationship between the main character who is the wife of some count nobleman duke person and her handmaid and the stories that they tell are so immersive and the illustrations are so beautiful i i love this graphic novel so much okay let's get into books that i don't physically have here with me so the seep by hannah porter is a beautiful queer jewish book about a trans main character who was in a lesbian relationship and marriage with her wife but after the seep comes which is basically this alien invasion of planet earth her wife decides to become reborn as a child and so our main character then gets like left alone and the world of the seep is one where i know you can't tell that i'm wearing a shirt but i am wearing a shirt i am actually i'm wearing a dress here's the outfit okay anyways um <laughs> so in the world of the seep we are on planet earth but planet earth has been colonized by this seemingly harmless and seemingly beneficial alien creature and this alien presence makes the world a better place it gets rid of capitalism it gets rid of evil transactional things and in some ways it is kind of utopia but the relationship that the seep and this alien entity has with the earth and the people on it is oftentimes fraught so it's a very interesting book and i think that the themes of world building and how sci-fi and speculative it is while still being really rooted and grounded in reality and this like literary fiction sense of self was really impressive and i really really enjoyed this the next book that i don't have physically with me that i really enjoyed was milk fed by melissa broder this book follows a bisexual jewish uh young woman who is in la i believe is it la I literally don't even remember. So she is having a little bit of an identity crisis. She has mommy issues. She has eating disorders. She has body dysmorphia to high hell. And she meets this girl who is in an orthodox home and community, I think, or if not orthodox, like conservative and conservative Jewish community and family. And this girl is very fat and she works at a family froyo place. And because our main character is someone who is obsessive about her food habits um, and 
she is very particular about what she eats. This presence of this girl in her life who doesn't serve her food, doesn't serve her her yogurt the way that the other server usually does, this totally disrupts her entire state of being and they get into this friendship, relationship, this kind of toxic thing that it involves the entire family. There are conversations about um, Judaism and what that means for women and queer women specifically and also the obviously the issues with like food and it was just a really solid but like very gross book if that makes sense. If you like Otessa Moshbeg or other sad girl millennial books you should check this out. And speaking of sad girl millennial books I recently read the book The Divines by Ellie Eaton and this book was wild like every element of queer all girls preppy boarding school versus the locals um and then looking back on that um as an adult woman reflecting on all of those experiences this book was fantastic i rated it five stars it's definitely one of my new favorites of all time which is very interesting because on goodreads it has a pretty low average rating like 3.27 or something like that which is very low for goodreads but i really enjoyed this book and even though the queerness and the sapphic elements of this story doesn't don't really kick in until pretty late in this pretty thick ass book it's still so so worth it because we are alternating the perspectives of the grown-up version of our main character Josephine or Joe and her teenage self at this boarding school and the weird traditions that they have and the toxic clicky and cruel friendships that she has um, especially in light of her reflection as an adult looking back on her own experiences and living out her adult life as a married woman and how that experience still haunts her to that day and into her experiences with motherhood and relationships with other women it's just so fascinating and this book had a killer beginning that just already brings you into the sense of dread and kind of that that teenage girl toxicity while at the end just everything goes in so many directions that wow it was it was incredible so yeah i just love this book and it, it's a sapphic book and sapphics need to read it the next book i have here that i actually don't physically have with me but i want to talk about is girls made of stone and glass by melissa basherdust our author is i think our iranian american persian american and in this story we are following a retelling of the snow queen story the ice queen story so there is another alternating perspective sort of fantasy situation here where our main character one of our main characters ends up being the stepmother uh to the king uh, or not to the king but the stepmother so wife to the king and she has a heart made of glass because her father is a sorcerer and her father is a pretty twisted sick evil man and her stepdaughter is another character that we follow in this book another one of our main characters and she is sapphic and she is the princess and she has a very very close relationship with her stepmother who is the other main character and there's some sort of magical powers situation going on and this kingdom is covered in snow like it's very it's a very cold kingdom so it's just a very very atmospheric and chilling to the bones book experience while also incorporating this political intrigue and this dark magic presence and these main characters and their relationships that are so 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 engaging and our main character who is the princess uh kind of gets into this relationship with the doctor who is at the castle who is a girl her age and it's just a very cute situation um but this whole story is like a dark fairy tale but gay and complex and exploring mother-daughter relationships and distant men in this fucking incredible way. Honestly, such a good book. The next book that I don't have with me physically but I really enjoyed is When the Tiger Comes Down the Mountain by Ni Vo. This book is the second book on the, the Singing Hills cycle novella series basically and I think you could probably read this book without reading the first book. This book is very sapphic and it has to do with tigers that are shapeshifters and monks and clerics and storytelling and it is 
very, very beautiful and rich. And the sapphic elements are really integral to the story. And really men don't really show up in this story, which I like. And it's set in fantasy Vietnam. It is a very beautiful book and I enjoyed it a lot. Even more so than the first book in the series, even. And the last book I have to recommend to you that I don't physically have with me is the second book in a series again. And this is, or maybe the third book. And this is A Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee. Mackenzie Lee is a cancelled author. Don't buy her books. Just check her book out from the library or whatever. This book is a incredible sapphic book. I just enjoyed it so much. It's this fun historical fiction young adult adventure novel that follows the aftermath of the first book's events, but you don't necessarily need to read the first book's events because in The Lady's Guide to Pirates, Piracy and Petticoats, or sorry, to Petticoats and Piracy, long ass title, oh my god. Um, in this book, we kind of get a summary of what was going on in the first book and the aftermath of it, but we're following our main character as she's trying to secure her mother's, like, botanical observations, I think, or some sort of, like, she's basically like a badass female She's a, she's a steminist, okay? Like, she is a woman in STEM. She is a lesbian. I mean, I don't know if she ever says this. I don't think the language of, like, lesbianism was ever, like, because it's, like, set in the 18 or 1700s or something. But, like, she, she kind of is. Um, in the first book, people were speculating that she's, like, ace, but, like, she's maybe ace, but, like, she's definitely, like, a lesbian. This book is just so incredible. I had so much fun while reading it, and I was laughing out loud some of these scenes were just so fucking funny and ridiculous. I, I loved it. So this is a great book. Don't support the author because she's like a weirdo, but I, I like this book. So finally, let's get to oh, the books that I have here physically with me. So let's let's first start off with the books that are not like explicitly sapphic or that don't really you don't know or you don't like it's not brought up until later in the book maybe and it's not like thematically important necessarily so let's start off with those and then we'll get more and more gay as we go along the first book of that nature is fortune favors the dead by stephen spotswood this is a new york city 40s detective mystery situation and our main character is this pretty butch girl who is the assistant to a lady detective and there are private investigators and she gets into a relationship with one of her clients actually and uh it's it's a pretty it's a pretty cute gay situation that is pretty really really integral to the plot honestly um and even though the guy who wrote this is a guy and not like a lesbian or a bisexual woman uh it's still a really good book and if I, if a man wrote a book and i like it that means that it is a very good book so i really enjoy this I haven't seen enough people pick it up if you like funny things if you like mysteries if you like gay people you have to pick this up i'm so sweaty let me open this window. If you hear the wind blowing in and the birds chirping, don't mind at all. Don't mind. The next book on my stack right in front of me here is We Ride Upon Sticks by Quan Berry. Ugh, this book is just so fucking funny. I love books that can make you laugh. It's so 80s. It's so rooted in the 80s and there's a magical realism element that is mostly played for humor. We're following this girls field hockey team and we're kind of in the minds of all of them. We get to experience all of these girls personalities and backgrounds and the drama that goes on between them. That's not really like toxic clicky drama. It's more just like silly high school fun and they basically make a pact at the beginning of the season where they do like a magic spell situation where <laughs> they are all in on it and if they all perform these like rituals they can make it to state or make it to regionals like they can you know they can succeed at, at field hockey really well so that's what happens uh but their success comes kind of at a price and it's also set in like salem where the you know the witchcraft trials happen so that's a thematic element in the story that is really funny. Uh, I just love this book so much and a lot of these characters are queer, a lot of the characters end up discovering themselves as queer, and it's really integral to the plot and the storytelling and it's just so fucking funny. So cannot recommend this book enough. Next up we got Sarah Land by Sam Cohen who is another queer Jewish millennial author. Can you tell that I love queer Jewish millennial authors? <laughs> so this book is a collection of short stories mostly about women, young women who are kind of 
not really sure about their place in life. And a lot of these books in encompass their queer awakenings or their queer relationships. And I, I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I recently read this. Uh, I read it for a vlog that should be coming out soon. And I, I liked it a lot. Okay, now we're getting into territory of books that are like very explicitly lesbian. So that's really exciting for us. Um, the first book I have here is actually a duology and I've talked about this so much, but the We Set the Dark on Fire duology oh my god i love these books it's about revolution it's about rebellion it's about lesbians rebelling against patriarchy and against tyrannical class divisions oh it's so good basically we're set in a world where all these rich dudes get to pick out from like this elite boarding school for girls a primera and a segunda for their wives so the primera wife is the one who's like helps them on political things to, on top of the organization and, and political stuff and like very, very on top of their shit and stoic and you know, that type of bitch. And the Segunda is like the erotic, like sexy wife who like does all the, all the vibes and stuff. <laughs> like, so there's two wives, right? All these rich, powerful men have two wives and we're following our main character who is training to be a Primera and she's very reserved and very good at what she does. She's the top of her class. But the thing is, the secret that she has is that she's undocumented. She comes from across the wall, across the border, and she is not legally supposed to be there. So at the very beginning of the story, there's this whole situation where it's like they're about to graduate, they're about to get assigned their roles for the rest of their lives as wives. And our main character realizes that the new security check system in place is like, very very much int more intense so her fake papers don't really pass it anymore so someone comes up to her and is like okay here are the fake papers but now you have to work for the rebellion group so she kind of gets blackmailed into working for this rebellion group but all the while the guy that she gets placed with is this fucking asshole and the girl who is the segunda to her primera is this girl that she's been beefing with all of like high school and it's this girl who is kind of for bullies so um yeah but the thing is is that they get into a romance together throughout this book uh and it kind of follows throughout in this book it's an enemies to lovers uh it's it's like a forced marriage situation it's it's so perfect i love it and the twists and the turns and the in uh, every oh gosh I love it so much. Can you tell? Okay, the next book I have here is one that has got immense amount of hype for good reason. It is a good fucking book. And that is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. Oh, so good. We're basically following a bunch of people who are majority black, majority women, and their experiences with their own lives and how they became who they are and lots of queerness involved. Lots and lots of queerness. Queerness in the sense of these young women coming to terms with themselves and people coming to terms with themselves. Um, and also in terms of like artists who are like very avant-garde and like are very well known for their writing and stuff. And also um, immigrant moms who get into relationships with each other and the culture around that. Like it's so interesting. Oh, this book is so good. If you haven't read it already, you need to. You need to, it's required. Oh, did I say that this is set in Britain? It's like all black British people, mostly all black British women. There, I think there's one non-binary character and there's one character who is white or like who doesn't realize that she's partially black, I guess. All these stories weave into each other's, like all these different characters live. I think there's like 12 different people. They weave in and out of each, of each other's lives in this seamless, incredible way. Like amazing. All these characters feel so very, very real. And I, lo I love this book. It won the man Booker. So next up, we got The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutkowski. Ari did a full length political analysis review on this. Watch that if you haven't already. I put my heart and soul into that video. This book is about a world where people are separated by their kith, which is kind of your like blood quantum or whatever. And if you're full kith, uh, if you're high kith, you can live inside the ward, or no, you can live inside like the city. And if you're half kith, you live inside the ward, which rings around it. And in the ward, you know, everything is restricted from what you eat to what you wear. And in the inner city all these rich people just get to party all day and there's like magic possibly and basically our main character is this girl who gets thrown into prison at the beginning of the story and she's just a good girl she's pretty quiet she's an orphan and she works at this bakery that also serves as a front for like a passport forging situation thing uh this book explores toxic relationships and also a sapphic main character relationship and the 
structure of an e- unequal world and how our main character goes about navigating that. So, very incredible book. The final book I have for you today is Nama by Sarah Blake. This is a queer retelling of the story of Noah's Ark. I did a full-length video review about this around last year at this time, I think, and I really enjoyed this book. It gives the character of Noah's wife who goes nameless in the Bible or the Torah or the Old Testament. So our so our author gives our main character's name, Nama. And it's a beautiful story. It's so rich and luscious and gorgeous and ethereal and mystical, but also so pretty and talks about family and love and everything just in God in just this incredible way. I, I love this book. Those are all of my sapphic book recommendations for you, my favorite sapphic books of all time. Let me know if you've read any of these books and whether you would have any other books uh, you would add to this list. There are some other books that I could have added but I just was like no they're they're not quite favorites. So if there are any that you think I missed, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. You can friend me on Goodreads, follow me on Twitter or Instagram if you want to. Please subscribe, you know, like, comment, whatever, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!